Peter Bear, don't you find it very hot today? I think they call it global warming. Yeah, it's almost unbearable. I know, right? And it's causing so much pandemonium in our land. I think it's because of humans and their selfish consumerism nowadays. That's deep. Eh? What's this? The last time I remembered, it was a tree. <sighs> I guess humans are destroying our land. I mean, just look at my good friend, Pedro Ben. Global warming and climate change are critical issues today. How do we save our furry friends? Many brands claim that they are green, but how many of them are truly green? Based on our research, the three criteria that make a brand green are Firstly, it will be the impact the brand has on the climate. Secondly, the chemicals used in the production of its good. And thirdly, resources used in production. Hey, Karen. Hmm? Me and Stitch have such dark eye circles. How do you maintain such great skin? Mm, I've been using products from Lush. Have you heard of Lush? Lush... Are they green? Mm, I guess so. Mm, why not I show you the website? Take a look at their website. It says that they are 100% vegetarian and they engage in ethical buying. Furthermore, they are against animal testing and their packaging is all naked. This shows that the bread is truly green. Are you sure? My animal instincts tell me that there's more than meets the eye. Hmm. Maybe I should go down and check it out with my friend, Pedro Beth. Maybe you should. Let's, Let's go! Pedro Beth! Oh, sorry. About half of the products can be taken home with no packaging saving nearly 6 billion plastic bottles globally from selling shampoo bars alone. And even when packaging is unavoidable, recycled materials are used in packaging. This shows that Lush fulfills the first criteria by minimizing the climate impact. Secondly, their products are packed with harmful preservatives, including paraben, which is the most toxic substance used in cosmetics. This shows that Lush does not fulfill the second criteria of using non-harmful chemicals. Thirdly, they buy raw materials to make their products only from suppliers that do not test their raw materials on animals. This fulfills the third criteria as they do not engage in any harmful processes on animals during production. So Lush seems like it's actually greenwashing. Yeah. Wow. So humans are really selfish after all. Do green brands actually exist? I still think green brands exist. Mm, you know the brand Timberland? I think they're really green. Oh wait, bears don't wear shoes, so you won't really know what is it, right? Wow, well, actually I do wear shoes. In fact, I'm wearing a pair of Timberland shoes right now. I always thought that Timberland was actually a green company because they've always been promoting themselves as environmentally friendly. Maybe we should check them out? Yeah, I think we should. Now that we find out about greenwashing, I think we should use the three criteria to check it out. Okay, let's go! Yeah, I think we should. In their efforts to save the environment, Timberland strives to reduce their energy usage by 10% from 2015 to 2030. Currently, 32% of their energy consumption is from renewable sources. Thus, they have met the requirement of having a favourable climate impact. For chemicals used, Timberland is actively searching for 100% PVC-free footwear and 100% PFC-free water repellents for its footwear by 2020. This eliminates the harmful substances released into the Earth's environment. Timberland also uses cotton from organic and local sources. In 2016, they successfully used 58% of local cotton and this is expected to reach 100% in 2020, which fulfills the third criteria of the resources used in production. Wow, I'm so glad that Timberland is green as a brand. Faith in humanity is restored, my friends. Friends? Where's Peter Bear? Peter Bear was thirsty, so he went out to get a can of Coke. Coke? Hmm, speaking of Coke, is Coca-Cola green as brand? Well, even though the nature of its product has a huge ecological footprint, however, Coca-Cola has done a lot to make itself green and fulfill the three criteria. Firstly, for the climate impact, 
Coca-Cola revealed its new 100% recyclable PET plastic bottles, which are made out of plant-based materials. These bottles have kept a total of 315,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide from being released into the environment. Secondly, when we analyze the chemicals used, the ingredients used in Coca-Cola are environmentally friendly and safe for consumer consumption because they have a very strict policy on supply chain procurement. Thirdly, for the resources used in production, Coca-Cola strives to treat and return 100% of their manufacturing water back to the environment. This demonstrates their efficiency in reusing resources during the production. Wow, so it means that Coca-Cola is actually green as a brand. But are consumers actually aware of this? Let's go to Giant to ask them. Maybe you should. Let's go! go Giant! Yay, let's go! Have you heard of Coca-Cola and do you think it's green? Like the company, like the brand, is it green? No? Of their environment, environmental initiatives before, like how they contribute to the environment. Okay, thank you. I'm back. I guess they don't actually know. That's really a pity. I agree. What about what about Innisfree? I heard that they're all natural. I guess we have to check it out. Let's, Let's go. go! Innisfree uses eco-friendly packaging, such as recyclable and biodegradable materials, which minimizes the harm on the climate. Innisfree is also known for the lack of six chemicals in their products, namely paraben, artificial pigments, animal ingredients, mineral oil, and artificial fragrances. For their resources used, Innisfree has also been leading a recycling campaign that pledges to reduce their waste by reusing empty bottles, which is a promise to source for more than 70% of their ingredients from natural raw materials. That's great. I guess Innisfree is green too. But the question is, do the consumers know? <laughs> Oh man, I guess consumers don't really know after all. That means that these consumers aren't going to be more likely to buy the products just because they are more green. I know, consumers need to know who they are purchasing from. In fact, I have a friend in China in one of the few companies that produces cosmetics with zero animal testing. Let me Skype her. is one of the biggest challenges that your green brand faces? I think one of the biggest challenges of the last three years is that specifically in China, people don't really understand green. Like what, 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 are, what is a green business? And in my case, what is a green product? I think there's a general perception of what green is, but it's not, we have to do a lot of education to, to let people know what is a green product? So uh, the fact that our products are biodegradable, the fact that our products are made locally, all these things we really, really have to constantly be spelling out and educating people. Yes, I agree. This is why not all green companies are actually green brands and not all brands that people perceive to be green are actually green. It is important for consumers to know the environmental impacts of the brands they are purchasing. Many companies claim to be green but are they really green? And this is when we look back at the three criteria which we have at the start. Firstly, it will be the impact the brand has on the climate. Secondly, the chemicals used in the production of its good. And thirdly, resources used in production. This way, we are one step closer to saving our furry friends.